Hi, it's me Nirajan Podil and today we are in the lab magnetic materials and the magnetic interaction. So let's get started. So let's get started with the magnet and the magnetic substances. So for the magnet, we all are familiar from our childhood that we used to play with the magnets. They are so interesting. Uh, I have collected some different shape of the magnets. Uh, you can see uh, some are the bar magnet, some are some are the, the cylindrical, the circular, and the different shape. So the magnet they have some special properties like they attract the magnetic substances like iron, nickel, those things, and magnet has two different pole namely the north pole and the south pole and if we bring two magnet together the same pole they repel each other on the other hand the opposite pole they have the property of attraction they attract each other and in the previous lab we studied about the charges we can have the single negative charge or single positive charge but in case of magnet Unlike charges, magnetic monopole does not exist. It means we cannot have a single pole like a north pole or a south pole. If we break a magnet, then again we will have the two north pole and the two south pole. Okay? And if we uh, suspend a magnet freely, then the freely suspended magnet always points the geographical north pole and the geographical south pole. The reason is we can consider the earth itself is a magnet there is the terrestrial magnet that we call and the north pole of the terrestrial magnet is pointed towards the south and the south pole is pointed towards the north that's why a freely suspended magnet always points the north and the south okay and let's talk about some magnetic substances so the object they are attracted by the magnets they are the magnetic substances like the iron nickel cobalt uh, and the materials or the stuff they are made up of these substances they are the magnetic substances okay then let's talk about the magnetic field so if we have a magnet then around the magnet there is some reason up to which a magnet influence the magnetic substances so that reason we call the magnetic field and you can see if we have a bar magnet and some iron dust they will split something like this and here i have a picture of the earth so just now i discussed earth itself behave as a magnet so if we consider in that way the earth also has the magnetic field around it and you can see it in this figure and here is the magnetic field line for a bar magnet okay then let's go to the some properties of the magnetic field so magnetic field it is a vector quantity so it has direction uh, in case of a bar magnet the field lines are always pointing from north to south outside the magnet but inside the magnet they are pointed from south to north okay so in this bar magnet you can see they are pointing from north to south outside the magnet but inside this magnet they are pointing from south to north so we can have always the close line in a magnetic but in case of electric field, if I have a negative charge here, they, they, we have the field they are coming towards the charge. So they are open line. But the magnetic field, they are always the closed line. And the next point is, if we have two magnetic fields, then they never intersect each other. Since we have a different force direction at a particular, we cannot have a different force direction at a particular point. And the, the direction of the magnetic field at a point is a tangent at that point on that field line so if i want to find the direction of magnetic field at this point then i have to draw a tangent at this line so that is the direction of magnetic field okay and the uh, if we have some more magnets like the two magnets then we can find the magnetic field by using the superposition principle so we have to use the vector addition again okay? and the strength of a magnet the magnetic field strength is stronger towards the pole whereas it is weak towards the uh, middle region uh, on the other hand if we go away from a magnet then the field strength will be weaker so that also away the inverse is square uh, then okay so let's go to the magnetic force in a current carrying wire in a magnetic field so just now we discussed that 
we have a magnet and the magnetic field. Let's see what happens if we bring some current carrying conductor inside that magnetic field. So actually, uh, we have a Lorentz force. Uh, we have the equation force is Q B cross B. That means the charge is Q. B is the velocity. B is the magnetic field. So in generally, if a charge is moving inside the magnetic field, then it experiences some forces. And if we have the current carrying conductor, it means there is flow of the charge. So the charges they experience the force. And as a whole, the wire experiences a force. And we have equation, the force on the wire is I L cross B. The L is the length, actually it is the direction of the current, and B is the magnetic field. Okay, so, and in the representation, we use the cross sign if the field is uh, perpendicular to the plane of the paper going inward, and we use the dot sign for the field coming outward. So if I have some current that is coming out of my plane of the paper, then I use a circle with a dot. This is the way of representation. And I think you can easily find this, uh, the vector product, A cross B. So you can use your right hand rule. So if I have a vector A towards my, uh, towards my the index, uh, and I have, I have the, uh, the next vector B towards my the the middle finger then my thumb points the direction of a cross b okay so if i have l cross b then i can use in general this rule to find the direction of force and there are other several rules like the fleming's right hand rule reference rule so if you are familiar with any of those rules you can easily use those okay so uh, next is the magnetic field of a current carrying conductor so uh, in the magnetic field uh, we can say the magnetic field is around the magnet. Not only that, if we have a current carrying conductor, then we have the magnetic field around that current carrying conductor also. So let's say if we have a straight conductor like this, and if, if the current is flowing from uh, down to top like this, then we can hold the wire so that uh, with the right hand so that my thumb is along the direction of current. Then my car finger, they shows the direction of the magnetic field. So you can see this figure, if the current is going upward, then we can find the direction of the magnetic field by our curved fingers. And here I have some picture of the magnetic compass. Uh, these are the small tiny device, they are used to uh, determine, uh, of the, uh, determine the pull of the magnet. So we can easily find which one is the north pole and which one is the south pole by using these uh, um, tiny magnet. Actually, if we go back to the history, then uh, accidentally in the lab, uh, the Worsted, the scientist, he found that uh, current, he, he bought a uh, the magnetic compass near to a current carrying conductor and he absorbed uh, the deflection on the needle and uh, he thought there must be some magnetic field and uh, they, then this is the background how we find the magnetic field uh, around the current carrying conductor. So uh, this is the direction for the straight wire. If we have some uh, circular loop uh, like this, if we have a single current loop, then we can find the direction of that current loop by using uh, again the same right hand rule. So if my car finger shows the direction of current, then my thumb points the direction of the magnetic field. So this is something like this, but this time we have the uh, current along our car finger and the field along our thumb. So if you have the multiple current loops like the several tons, then that we call the solenoid and it also creates the magnetic field in the same way. And the field strength of the solenoid, it depends upon the, the number of ton for unit length. So if we have a high number of ton, then the magnetic field inside the magnet will be stronger and it depends upon the current flowing through the wire as well. So if there is more current, then we can generate a stronger magnetic field. Okay. Uh, this is the lab. Thank you.